your Bible. Pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day if you want to grow. If you want to grow, if you want to grow. Read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day if you want to grow. Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to your Sunday school. I am very sure you are excited to be in Sunday school this morning. I am. God bless you. But before we go into our lesson, let us close our eyes and pray in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful. Thank you for Sunday school. Jesus, please come to our presence. Bless us. Teach our hearts. Save our souls. And at the end of our life, please God, write our names in the book of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our friend Joyce is going to recite our memory verse. Please let us listen to her. God bless you. God gives them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. Daniel chapter 1 verse 17. Thank you so much, Joyce. God bless you. Boys and girls, before we go into this lesson, we want to discuss about some choices. There are good choices and bad choices. But I pray that God will help us to make good choices in our life. Some Children may say, I will always obey God. That is a good choice. I like to eat healthy food. Brilliance, that's a good choice. I want to do my own work. That is another good choice. I like to be in Sunday school. That is good choice. I am happy to follow others to do anything. I don't care. That's not a good choice. I don't care. I can eat any food. That is a bad choice. I will not say the truth so that I will not be punished. That is not a good choice. God will help us to decide today to choose to do the right thing. The title of our lesson today is Daniel Decides. Daniel Decides. The Bible passage we are going to read is Daniel chapter 1, verses 1 to 21. But we are going to read only Daniel chapter 1, verses 1 to 8. Dara Simi and Samuel will be reading for us. Let us take out our Bibles and read along with them. God bless you. Daniel chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judea, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem, and besieged it. 2. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judea, into his hand, with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God, and he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. 3. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel, and of their king's seed, and of the princes. 4. Children in whom was no blemish, but well favoured, and skilful in all wisdom, and cunning in knowledge, and understanding science, and such has had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Daniel chapter 1 verse 5 to 8. 5. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat, and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years. 
that at the end therefore they might stand before the king. 6. Now among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Meshel, and Hazariah, seven, unto whom the prince of Eunuch gave name, for he gave unto Daniel the name of Belshazzar, and to Hananiah of Shadrach, and to Meshach of Meshach, and to Hazariah of Abednego. 8. But Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of eunuchs that he might not defile himself. That was a very nice reading, Darasimi and Samuel. God bless you both. From the Bible passage we have read together, we learned about four Hebrew boys. They were taken to another country, whereby in that country they like to worship idol. But thank God for these four Hebrew boys. They already prayed and get saved from their own country before taking out of that country. And they were told that they will eat food offered to idol. Imagine. So the four boys said, no. Put us on only beans for 10 good days and see what our God will do for us. Great. Glory be to God. After 10 days that these four boys were eating only beans, they brought them out. They appeared better. They look handsome. They were so bright. They have more intelligence compared to other people that were eating food offered to idol. Boys and girls, it's good for us to pray on our food before eating and God will bless it. It's good to believe in God that whatever God has provided for us, no matter how small it may be, it may not look yummy like other people's food, but once we have prayed unto God, once we have God to bless that food, God will bless the food for us. And that is another lesson for us. We should be happy with whatever food our mom is, we give to us as long to school. We shouldn't look at other people's food because we don't know the type of food. We don't know. Maybe they did not even pray on the food. And this brings us our key statement, the right choice. These four boys made the right choice because they have prayed, they believe in God, the, the Spirit of God is in their heart to make the right choice. Boys and girls, that is what we are going to do this morning after this Sunday school. We are going to pray. We are going to pray and tell Jesus to come to our heart to make the right choice in every decision we want to make. We want to trust in God. We want to believe in God that God will lead us as he led the four Hebrew boys. The lesson activity, ages 2 to 5, circles the names of the four men in this lesson. Ages 6 to 8, a wise choice. Use the four words in the word box to complete the message. Our next week lesson is lesson 8b, titled, Who Knows the King's Dream? Boys and girls, that's the end of our lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. God bless you. We'll see you next week for another beautiful lesson. God bless you. Bye. Good morning. Welcome to Sunday School. 
The title of our lesson today is That Special Mom. Our key verse says, Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well pleasing unto the Lord. Colossians chapter 3, verse 20. I'm sure you all knew that. Our Bible text is taken from Proverbs chapter 31, verse 10 to 31. But we'll only be reading selected verses so open your take your bible and open to proverbs chapter 31 with me we would be starting with verse 10. 10. who can find a virtuous woman for a price is far above rubies going to verse 11 the heart of our husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need for spoil of spoil. 28. Our children rise up and call her blessed, our husband also, and he prays at her. 29. Many daughters have done virtuously, for thou excellest them all. Verse 30. Favour is deceitful, and beauty is vain. For a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Now you can put your Bible down while we continue with the lesson. What can you see on the screen? I'm sure you can see pictures of mothers with their children. Some are playing with them, maybe reading to them, or doing one thing or another. We all know that mothers are special to us. They do so much for us. Just think about it today alone. How many things have your mom done for you? Every day. They feed us. They cook for us. They wash our clothes for us. They iron them. They get us ready for school. They take us to school, they bring us back. They provide for all that we need. New clothes during our birthdays and special occasions. New shoes for school and for the house. Pretty clothes to wear to church. If you think about every single thing that a mother does, and if you were to pay somebody to do each of them, how much money do you think you would need to spend? So much money. I'm sure you couldn't afford it. But our mothers do all of these things for us every single day. They are that amazing. Which is why the Bible encourages us to obey them and to do what they ask us to do. You might wonder, how did mothers get to be so amazing? Were they born like that? Do they know how to do all these things just like that? That is not the case. Just like you, all mothers were children at one time. They also were taught by their parents. And as they grew up, they learned how to be adults. So they took on responsibilities as they grew up. The same thing applies to each and every one of us. As our mothers were children, just like you are now, so also you can start learning to be great adults. You can see the good work that your mother is doing and learn a lot from that. The Bible lets us know that God has a responsibility and something for each and every one of us to do. For example, in the family, we have the mother, we have the father. They provide and help lead us in the way of God. God has placed them in our lives for a purpose. So the same way God has a purpose for you and for me. As we grow up, we learn this purpose through our parents. For example, 
They take us to church. That is the best place for us to learn about God and to learn about his purpose and his will for our lives. They teach us the way of life, how to be good adults when we grow up. So just as God has a responsibility for the adults in our lives, he also has a responsibility and he has purpose for you and for me. And when we fulfill and when we do the purpose that God has for us, there are blessings to follow. Let us look at what Psalm 37 verse 4 has to say about this. Open your Bible with me to Psalm 37. We would be reading verse 4. It says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. So that's saying that when we're delighted, when we're happy to do the will of God, it would bless our ways. It would make us prosper in whatever we lay our hands on. That means that the blessings of God will be with us. And people around us will be able to see this. And when we then grow up, we would be just like our special moms and those special adults in our lives. We start to learn how to be adults when we grow up, good adults that are responsible. We start to learn that now by obeying our parents. So for example, where mom or dad tells you to do something, you don't argue, you do it because they're doing it in love. They're doing it because they want to teach us the way to go. We learn to obey them, to respect them, to honor them. That is what God expects from us. You can think of the family like a car. Do you think a car would be able to run if it did not have the battery in it? I don't think so. What about if the steering wheel was missing? Mm, I really don't think it would work. Or what about if one of the tires was missing? I don't think that car is fit for the road. I'm sure you agree with me on this. So the same way the family is like a car. Everyone has a part. Maybe the father acts like the tires, or you can use the steering wheel to represent the mother. And you can think of the battery as the children. For the car to work, everything has to be in the right place and doing exactly what it ought to do. So each time you get into a car, think of it as a family and think to yourself, am I fulfilling the role that God has for me. And that leads us to our key statement, which says, God has given me a role to play in my family. Let's take that again. God has given me a role to play in my family. One more time. God has given me a role to play in my family. The activity for the lesson is displayed above. Fit the words of each verse where they fit in the grids. Next week, our lesson is lesson 89, titled A Willing Giver. That is the end of our lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. God bless you. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this time in your presence. We thank you for the primary power lesson where you taught us to make choices. God, please help us to make good choices. We thank you for the answer lesson where you taught us that you have a role for each and every one of us. Lord, please help us so that we're able to fulfill the purpose and the role that you have for each and every one of us. Help us to grow up, to be good adults that follow your will 
Thank you, Lord, for we know you will do this and much more. For your mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. See you next week. I hope you have a wonderful week ahead. God bless you. Bye. Thank you, boys and girls, for joining today's Sunday School. We hope and pray you enjoyed. Have a wonderful week ahead. God bless you. Bye.